Okay, so I received this comment from a student uh, whose name has been changed to protect the innocent. He says, hi, my question was, how can I use my Inspire CX to undergo trig graphs, like draw the graph of 2x squared between the limits of x is greater than 0 but less than 360? Uh, he says, because I can draw, this person obviously can draw this graph, and so he's an A-level student. <clears throat> but just in case, he'd like to know how to find all solutions to the question in that range. So there's our question. There is our question. I think it's a great question. And this is how I think I'm going to try to answer this, and I hope it's a good answer for you, is that I am going to go here. I'm going to insert the cal calculator here. So I'm at my calculator screen here. And then I'm going to define this function. So our student wants to know cosine 2x. Now I want you to keep in mind that what this says is 2 times the angular value, right? And then I'm going to define this as f of x. Now, he has to have this done between 0 and 360. My calculator is currently in radian mode, so I'm going to do this between 0 and 2 pi. If you wanted to, to change that to degrees, the way that you would do that is simply that you would that you would go to your home screen and change your settings. It's very, very easy. And I did a very, very short video on that, so if you need to see that, please look at it. So if I just do this, first off, I can find I can find any any value of this, right? I said that I have this in radian mode right now, so I can take f of pi thirds. So f of pi thirds, so that's pi thirds. Look at this. Now you may go, that's not cosine of pi thirds. No, it's two times. It's two, it's cosine of two times pi thirds. So this is really cosine of two pi thirds. And if you check your unit circle in the second quadrant, one of the first things you're going to see as you pass pi halves is two pi thirds, and you're going to see that the cosine value is, in fact, negative one half. Having said that, as long as you have your calculator set to degrees or radians, whichever one you're calculating, and as long as you feed in the numbers that correspond to those angular values in degrees or radians, it's going to work out fine for you. It's going to be no problem at all. The next question that you could ask would be, that, that uh, our student asked was this, how do I graph that? And he wanted it 0 to 2 pi. <clears throat> There's a number of ways to do that. One is you could set it up as a piecewise function. So you could go here to insert, and you could insert a graph here. You could pretend that you were going to set this up as a piecewise function. So you'd go right here, just to show you, and you could just choose this piecewise function right here. It says how many, the number of pieces, and I'm only going to have one piece in, in my piecewise function, right? Just one piece here, and then hit enter. And it sets it up this way. So what I'm going to say is I want f of x. And then here is my interval. And I'm going to say 0, control, equal sign here, less than, right, because I'm going to put this x value in here. And I also wanted x less than 2 pi. So I'm going to put in um, less than or equal to 2 pi. So again, less than or equal to 2 pi and just put in 2 pi. Your calculator will understand this perfectly. Now, 2 pi is about 6.28, so let's see if it works. See if it goes from this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, if it stops somewhere in here. Let's take a look at what it does. Voila. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. So here's a graph of it on the interval that you're interested in. By saving the function and making sure that we're in the correct angular measurement units, this is actually a pretty easy thing to do. I really hope this was helpful, and I hope that you, if you're not already subscribed, that you will. Thanks.